what is wrong with you? I don't know you, but if you're anything like me, you probably have an entire Greek chorus of critics that are intimately and caringly exactly exposing and identifying all of your flaws. What is wrong with you? I don't know. And more importantly, I don't care. And neither should you. So what I'm here to talk to you about today is even though I don't know you, okay, I don't know what's wrong with you, all of the things that are wrong with you, I can guarantee you absolutely one thing. Audacious claim, I agree, but that is you have absolutely nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain by absolutely ignoring your limitations. And I can tell you at least two reasons why, at least two reasons. First one is, let's suppose that from this moment forward, you spend the rest of your entire life, in fact, fixing your so-called flaws. The best that you could ever achieve, best results you could ever get from that, is you'd ultimately be less bad at what you're not suited to be. Talk about a law, I mean, a, a formula for diminishing returns. Would you apply that to anything else in your lives? I don't think so. The second reason I can give you is because, it's because it's called the law of subsidy, or easier said, pay attention to your attention. Because anything that you subsidize will absolutely, inevitably, return absolutely one outcome. Anytime you subsidize anything, you get more of it. So you might want to ask yourself, on what side of the balance sheet of your assets and deficits do you actually want to be having compounded uh, interest and in fact be increasing? So if you're still not convinced, I'd like to indulge, make, uh, indulge, indulge me a bit. And I'd like to ask for you to do a little thought experiment with me. Uh, are you game? Okay, all right. I'd like you to close your eyes. And I'd also like you to shut out all of those voices that are in fact telling you all the flaws that you have, including the self-internalized voices inside your own head, okay? And instead, I'd like you to in fact envision the ideal vision of yourself that you are now becoming from this moment, the next moment, the next moment. Concentrate on what you have, not on what you lack. Open your eyes and say hello to future you. Now that we know the unworthy ideas that we are not going to be spreading today, instead I'd like to discuss with you possibly the most important idea that you will explore, not just today, but perhaps for the rest of your life. What could that possibly be? The answer is in the question. What I'd like to discuss with you today, the idea that I think is the most important idea I could possibly communicate today, is I want to explore with you the possibility of your self-fulfilling of your own potential. For me, this is perfectly expressed in the iconic and well and often cited pursuit of happiness. Now, that said, that seems awfully obtuse, and let me tell you, this is my pretty vision of happiness. It's never this pretty, it's never this neat, it isn't this clean, and it is not, in fact, linear. It is not, in fact, one time through. It's iterative, it's complicated, it gets more, in, in fact, involved and intricate the more that you pursue your happiness. My context, personally, is another metaphor I'd like to share with you. And that metaphor is that being happy is simply a good idea but the pursuing of your happiness is ultimately the greatest enterprise of your life. This is big stuff, and it's not a destination. It's a continued journey that you will become better at, bigger at, more expanded on, and the possibilities of your possibility actually end up being increasing, which is just the best thing ever. So let me give some context on this. What, in fact, if you had a happiness navigation system? I can't tell you what's wrong with you, and I certainly can't tell you how to pursue your happiness. But I think I do have a framework in which you will, in fact, live out all of the different kinds of realms and the exciting existential reality of pursuing your happiness. So 
one other kind of overlay I'd like to put on this so that we can have some context is a personal, um, is also a personal relevance, and that is from aviation. So what I'd like you to do is come fly with me. And if you'd be allowing for me to take you along, I'd like to be your pilot today on, on, a, uh, on a flyover. And that said, if we look again at uh, the context that I showed you before of this very, very pretty, uh, very lovely version of happiness, I will tell you that the navigational system for happiness, in fact, includes and is comprised of nine existential realms or living domains, which I call concourses. And those concourses, in fact, are populated within your experience of happiness. Again, the sequence would only depend on where you were last and where you went next, but they're all there and it's fully comprised. But this is still incredibly, incredibly obtuse. So what I'd like to do, in fact, is put it within the context of taking you on a flight with me. And in so doing, taking that context and starting with pre-flight, takeoff, and in-flight. Now, I a moment ago told you that there is no destination for happiness. Um, in fact, it's a journey and that it's messy, and that there's no one way to do it, there's no one size fits all. So how could you possibly presume that there would be, in fact, a flight plan? I'm gonna tell you it's a good idea, and I'm going to use a yogiism from Yogi Berra, and that is, you know what? If you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. So I'd like to start us with a flight plan. And the flight plan starting with, in fact, your pre-flight. Pre-flight is your systems check. Before you even start to taxi down the runway, you need to have a good working familiarity of your equipment. This is what you will take with you and the skills you'll have no matter what you do, where you go. And in that context, the three concourses that are included in pre-flight are being live. This is your life. You are here. No matter what you do, where you go, you take your life with you. And there's no hesitation here, guys. You're doing it already every single moment of your lives. Okay, so come as you are with what you have and what you know right now. Secondly, and I'm not gonna say that these are in any particular hierarchy order, it's only the sequence I'm giving them to you today, is value your values. The importance of what matters to you. I want you to understand what I'm saying here. It's not important because it matters to you. I am telling you that the values you hold, whether you know what they are or not, in fact, will influence and inform everything you think, feel, say, and do. This is the foundation of your destiny. You might want to get it right. The third concourse that's included in pre-flight is true you. Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. There is now one. There has ever been one. There will ever be one of you. Dr. Seuss said there's no one youer than you. That's your job. By the way, nobody else wants a job. In fact, I think they've got work to do on their own. But I'm going to put a counterpoint to Dr. Seuss, and that's Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, who said, always remember that you are sublimely unique, just like everyone else. So being different is not a distinction or a dishonor, okay? It's being different. How you are different will make all the difference. And from this, you will develop an authentic self-awareness. So, we're going to proceed, and we're ready for takeoff. And takeoff is about not only the directional, the directional, your attitude, and also the momentum to, in fact, overwhelm gravity. How cool is that, right? So we're going to start with, in fact, your meaning. And this is meaning at large. Make a meaningful impact. Break out your purpose. And Viktor Frankl said that if you give a person a why, they can withstand any who, what, where, or when. So your purpose is the why of you. Make it big and make it your own. Secondly, life lab, lifelong learning, your experiment of lifetime. Knowledge will not attain you, you have to attain it. And it's not so much what particular things you're learning, but there are really two higher order dynamics that are the most important with lifelong learning. It's learning to learn, and thereafter continuing to yearning to learn. So, the third is exercise your liberty, thrive by choice. 
going to give you a sobering fact of life, which is not negotiable, and it will in fact be true for every single person in this room and on the planet. There is one thing, and only one thing, you will ever have to do. It's non-negotiable, and pretty much every person thinks they're going to be the one person ever of our species to in fact negotiate ourselves out of it. Do you know what that is? You have to die. And that means everything else is choice. Now this is either the most liberating or the most debilitating thing anyone will ever come to understand. I would really like it for you to choose that it's the former, as well as the fact to understand that the quality of your life will depend on the quality of your choices. So here we go, guys. We're getting up to our cruising altitude. And in so doing, we in fact are talking about a constant balance between negotiation and navigation while we're overwhelming gravity and we stay airborne. So first and foremost is dream ignition. And that is start your engine, engage your focus and passion. Edison said, vision without execution is a hallucination. The higher altitudes and the more rarefied air is in fact where your dreams do live. You do need to go there to get them, but you're going to have to in fact allocate your resources accordingly with your focus and your passion. If you're too focused, you won't have any peripheral view. And any good pilot knows that we have to scan the horizon while we focus on our instruments. Secondly, the passion, how could you possibly have too much passion? Well, it, one of the, air, the rules of the air is, the only time you have too much fuel is when you're on fire. So you can, in fact, crash and burn. Let's not do that. The uh, next concourse that's involved with uh, in flight is flourish in flight. Fly solo and soar. Dan Peake's work of drive, which is about the true understanding of motivation. In addition to meaning, he in fact says that a person needs to have self-autonomy and they have to have self-mastery. And in fact, if you're going to lead anything or anybody else, you first must lead yourself. The final in our concourse is living flow. Live the life you love and love the life you live. As far as flow theory is concerned and having a rhythm of peak experiences in our lives, I do believe in fact our lives are our peak experience. Also, the connections that you will make among the concourses will make it stronger and make your life more integrous as you go through uh, your pursuit of happiness. So if I was to leave you with anything today, what I would tell you is your pursuit of happiness. I want to be the, the purpose of your lives, the most important thing that you'll do. I want you to hold on to the pursuit of your happiness as though your life depended on it. Because ultimately, it will. So in fact, for being here today in happiness, I would like to tell you that the next X, the ultimate next X, is actually future you. Thank you very much.